if you have been out today, you might have noticed that spring has sprung in that it was sunny, and then it wasn't. So we get to do the very English thing of talking about weather and complaining about people who talk about weather, which is its own small satisfaction. But when I say spring, what, what comes to your mind? If I say spring, what do you start thinking of? Any ideas? Someone has some very strong associations with condiments, apparently. Uh, no, because when I say spring, what I think of is wasps! <laughs> Fuck! Shit! Fuck! Because this is, as you might have noticed, a wasp. Now, I am not a by, I'm not an entomologist by any stretch. I'm not here to do biology, I'm here to do sociology. Because like a biological assessment of a wasp is you've got the head, <laughs> a wing bit, <laughs> and suffering. So that, that's about as close as I get to biology for wasps. But wasps have something of a reputation in England, especially around here in Bristol, probably because we're so close to the country. I think actually wasps have a lot uh, in common with the average, the average Bristolian as well, because wasps tend to only come out when there's sun, uh, just kind of wander around going, uh, typically associated with cider. And I don't want to wake up with one on my face. So, but, as much as that is horrible, well, mm, they're a lot like Bristolians, but they're also quite a lot like Tories, which seems like a polar opposite. Because wasps and Tories, I mean, one is ruled over by a queen who sits at a central power structure uh, that like, everything around them is just regarded as a mindless drone to just serve and serve. And the other hates brown people. Uh, <laughs> It's indistinguishable, I know. But wasps, as much as they are a bane upon this world, they are not the worst thing in the world. Not by far. The worst thing in the world happens to wasps. In fact, there's lots of worst things in the world, and I've got a few of them here for you now. So I might try and engender some sympathy for wasps. Like some kind of, I don't know, some Stockholm Syndrome for this hell beast, if I can. I'm going to, like switch tacks entirely here and show you this thing. It's, it's a hoverfly. Looks quite a lot like a wasp. Uh, I'm told it's sitting on a British orchid and it's just kind of, it's enjoying spring. It's like the flowers are in brute, the flowers are in bloom. This thing is just kind of buzzing around and you might think, oh, fuzzy little thing. It looks quite nice. And that is where you're wrong! <laughs> this thing is like a cross between Myra Hindley and the T-1000. This thing is a nightmare come true because what this thing does, this cute little buzzy bastard here, is it looks enough like a wasp that they can go and walk into a wasp nest because wasps, not, not much going on. There. There's a wasp, okay? Its basic instinct is jam. So when this thing walks into a wasp hive, it can walk right into the center of a wasp nest wherever all these wasps are and they don't notice it because it looks enough like a wasp and they don't fucking know they're wasps. But what it does, it walks right in to the very middle of a hive and it begins to eat. It eats wasp babies. This is like a lion in a maternity ward. This thing just <laughs> strolls on in, goes, hmm, toddlers. Um, um, um. And the wasps don't do anything because again, it's wasps. No idea what's going on until they turn around. Like, didn't we have babies? <laughs> uh, and they buzz off again because that is just what can happen to stop a wasp's life at the start. What can happen to the wasp over the rest of its life is even more terrifying, and most of it happens to be other wasps, including but not limited to one of these. And if you think a wasp looks mean, this is like a Ferrari made of knives. This is, this is to wasps as that one cousin is who your parents don't really like having around, but he has to come and he has this knife that he really wants to show you. This is one of the larger hornets in the world. And what these hornets will do sometimes is they'll just approach another wasp colony that they happen to be much larger than. If, for example, this was the size of a wasp, this 
will be able to chew my face off while still tapping anxiously on the bar for some cider. Because <laughs> what they'll do is they'll approach a hive, a nest of wasps, hover around outside and just chop wasps in halves with their wings. Because they can. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> the sole reason they do this is because fuck you. <laughs> And at this point, you might look at this wasp. This, you know, this is your common garden variety hymenoptera. I'm not talking any of your, what is it, the eruptance jogaster, like the really weird wasps. This is just the average garden wasp. And at this point, it's probably looking, you know, it's looking quite friendly by comparison. It's got these, it's got these big friendly eyes at Disney Pixar. It's, it's all fuzzy around the side. And you might think, oh, that's, that's not bad. Unfortunately, nature happens to agree with you, and it happens to think that this is not a bad place to live. <gasps> and we've got some micrographs here, the zoomed in pictures of wasps, and you might be able to notice just something, a little, little tick under there. This is Xenos vesparum. This is one of the weirder wasp parasites in the world. There are wasps which are parasites. This is a parasite for wasps. It is about two millimeters long. And that is just long enough to crawl up inside a wasp. <laughs> and what do you do inside a wasp, you may ask? Well, it turns out you start doing some really weird shit to their tiny wasp brains. What Xenos Vesparum does is if it crawls into a neutered male worker wasp, is it starts telling it, Oh, hello. <laughs> You're a bit special, aren't you? <laughs> Oh, we're gonna be friends. Oh, you're a bit special, yeah. You are something really special. You're like a queen, you are. You're like a queen wasp. And the wasp goes, yeah. I'm special. I'm a queen. And it goes and it finds other queens. Other wasps start treating it like a queen. They start fattening it up. And it goes and it roosts with other queens when they enter their torpor overnight. And it spreads. Vesparum will crawl out of this wasp and crawl into another. And then when those queen wasps fly off after their torpor to start new colonies or if it encounters any other wasps along the way, then guess who's having creepy wasp babies tonight? <laughs> and of course, you can't talk about wasp parasites without mentioning the absolute top of the list when it comes to brain control. Something which we humans have learned to fear after generation upon generation of cultural conditioning of don't let this thing corrupt your brain, don't let this thing get in you and start making you behave weird because we do not abide that kind of thing very kindly. What we are of course talking about here is cordyceps. I know. <laughs> What cordyceps can do in wasps, in pretty much all wasps, in fact, in every single species of insect it is encountered, there is a different species of cordyceps fungus. What it can do is it falls, just floats on the wind onto a wasp, tickles its way inside, and gets up in its head and starts going, climb, climb, climb. And the wasp does it because it's wasp and it starts climbing higher and higher biting its way up stalks flying where it can other wasps might see it and they'll bundle it away not wanting to be near this thing as it climb climb gets as high and high and high as it can up until it reaches the very peak the very highest point it can reach when the fungus starts to spread inside the carapace of the wasp turning its own chitin exoskeleton into these fruiting bodies so it can erupt and burst out and these things scatter on the wind and fall down over the hive this wasp has come from as it's been climbing higher and higher and what do you think happens when you get some cordyceps in more wasps climb <laughs> climb and this thing spreads and spreads and spreads as far and wide as it can. And there's actually this, again, there's one of these for every single insect species that the cordyceps fungus has encountered. It is spread far and wide across this one little corner of phylogeny. And some people have entertained the idea, well, what if it made the leap to human beings? What if it could get in human beings' heads and start bursting out and spreading from person to person? I just want you to picture that for a second. Imagine something that could 
get inside a person, make them start behaving really weird, make them climb to the highest position they can until there's this huge, weird, fruiting body bursting out of their head. <laughs> So by comparison, <laughs> this is a wasp. <laughs> it's not the worst thing in the world. In fact, I would ask, if you do see a wasp this spring or summer out and around, please, just kill it. <laughs> because it is the kindest thing you can possibly do. Thank you very much. I have been Will Davis.